Hello and welcome to Election Brief. And coming up on the show today, governing MPP prepares to acclaim President Ekufuado as its presidential candidate and sets June 20 date for the party's parliamentary primaries. Tanana Abedankwa Ekufuado is the sole candidate of the new Petrote party. We'll speak to the party on the modalities agreed for the upcoming internal elections. Meanwhile, pollster Ben Efson predicts a massive reduction in votes for the governing MPP as he accuses the party of disenfranchising contenders within the MPP. The MPP candidate, Nana Kufuado, could enter 2020 elections minus 400 to 450,000 votes. Because the NDC picks are running mate and how they've been able to ginger, because there was a lot of apathy. Also, Supreme Court orders Electoral Commission to justify the rejection of old voters' ID as requirement for getting a new one. We have details. And President Rawlings has been speaking on the new voters' register as his party marks 41 years uh, since the June 4th uprising. I'm Arba Kumsid. Welcome to the show. Let's start with the governing MPP, which says it will soon publicly acclaim President Ekufuadu as its presidential candidate for the December 2020 polls, as it sets June 20 for its parliamentary primaries. The election, which was expected to have come off on April 25th this year, was postponed indefinitely due to the outbreak of COVID-19. General Secretary of the party, John, uh, John Buedu, uh, has been given further details of a steering committee meeting held yesterday which had the president and vice president Baumia in attendance. The party decided that its parliamentary primaries will come on on June 20th, 2020. All the 168 constituencies that we have city members of parliament. We also decided that we hold these elections at the various electoral commission demarcated electoral areas in order to ensure that we respect the measures put in place by government to protect ourselves and protect our members. We also ensure that all the social distance protocols are observed. And we believe that we'll be able to have a successful conference. We will later come out with rules and regulations guiding this uh, uh, parliamentary primaries and also come out with a total list of all members contesting on our ticket as decided by the National Executive Committee. Well, some MPs have welcomed the party's decision to settle on June 20 for its primaries. Here's MP for Pandai, Matthew Nyendam, and MP for Impriso, Seth Achampong. I think I must admit that these elections, these primaries, has been, a, let me say, some kind of a pressure on members of parliament. Mm. These have come, these have to be postponed, and COVID-19 has come to worsen them issues. But for now, we have no choice. We all have to respect the protocols. Because you cannot get or gather more than a hundred people at a go. Whether you like it or not, this is what we can make do with. And we should not be breaking the rules. We should not be breaking the protocols. Yes, it's going to cost, it's going to bring additional costs, but I think it's best for us at this particular time. Because we cannot we have just six months to go. We cannot play with it again because we don't know what even tomorrow is bringing. Looking at the pandemic and its behavior, we cannot tell. But we are just praying that this 20th that we have, yes, additional costs will come. Yes, additional human resources have to be deployed. But at the end of the day, I think this is the best thing that we can all adopt. And I think members of parliament are okay with it. The political party, this is an internal exercise. Right. The political party knows her people. If the, the people who are going to decide our faith, I can say as we speak, 
over 80% are set up in their mind. So the next 20% are what we will be, you know, following up on and talking to and dealing with them. I know that most of the delegates have made up their minds. Just a few who may still be observing. So far, I would say I'm okay with it because it's, it's been long. The, the long-awaiting primaries will have to come off so that at the end of the day, the party can be fully prepared to win the 2020 elections. And I think that so far, almost everybody from the caucus is okay with the dates and the procedures they are putting in place, which is going to be the, the, the electoral area basis and coalition will be done at the constituency head. The voting will be done, counting will be done at the, the electoral area basis, but coalition of the results will be done at the constituency head. I think that every member of parliament is, is, is prepared enough and I'm very sure that my members will come back and come back in good numbers. We have to go through the ritual. The ritual is that there must be a competitive elections to have a candidate for the party in each constituency where nominations were open prior to the current issues we are dealing with in respect of the pandemic. So you had some MPs there. Well, the party also uh, indicated that it was set to acclaim President Ikufuado as its candidate for the upcoming elections. The National Council of our party also accepted a report from the National Vetting Committee that indicated that at the opening and closing of nomination for presidential candidate of our party, it is only one person, Nana Adodankwa Akufu Adu, the President of the Republic of Ghana, who filed at the end of the closing of nomination. So the National Council have endorsed that decision that Nana Abedankwa Akufuado is the sole candidate of the new Petrote party and very soon we will communicate to the general public this acclamation. And uh, Sami Oku is national organizer of the governing MPP. He joins us via Zoom. Many thanks for your time, uh, Mr. Oku. Now, um, a lot were yeah. eagerly anticipating, you know, uh, this new date for the upcoming primaries. But tell us, what factors did the party consider before arriving on the new date? Well, let me say a very good afternoon to you and your cherished viewers. Um, for us in the NPP, we've come a long way with this so parliamentary primaries. At a point in time when we were set to have it on the 25th of April, uh, we had this lockdown and then the restrictions period. So the party had to postpone it indefinitely. Le yesterday at a sitting of the National Executive Committee, that is the body uh, clothed with the responsibility of fixing the date, the venue, the time uh, for our parliamentary primaries, and also to approve the reports of the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee and the National Parliamentary Appeals Committee to also look at the recommendations and thereof, and for the National Executive Committee to either adopt in whole or in part, or also to amend the various recommendations made or submitted to it by the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee and the National Parliamentary Appeals Committee. However, the, the steering committee of the party in between this period also had the opportunity to also go through and also make some recommendations as well. So the National Executive Committee of the party yesterday had to listen to recommendations from the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee, the National Parliamentary Appeals Committee, and the recommendations of the steering committee. And then looking at the circumstances, the wisdom of the National Executive Committee, we subsequently fixed the 20th of June uh, for our national parliamentary primaries. That is for the 168 minus one constituencies. When I say 168 minus one, I also West Wogan, which would have made it the 169th constituency. We excluded it, and this decision was taken somewhere last year by the National um, Executive Committee and National Council, respectively. So um, we are all set for June 20th. It's going to take place between the hours of 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. And it's going to be decentralized. 
in the sense that it's going to be conducted on electoral area basis across the country. We're looking at a total of 3,900 electoral areas across these 168 constituencies of the party. Tomorrow, the party will also come out with a full list of the various candidates who made it through the vetting and the appeal processes uh, of our party. Mm. So this uh, is a summary of it. Right. So uh, if I understand you correctly, it's uh, in two weeks. The primaries are happening in two weeks. Around two weeks. Uh, all things being equal. All things being equal. But how do you respond to suggestions that uh, the time frame is too close and that it will not uh, you know, give the aspirants enough time to campaign? And when you say the time is too close, are you talking about for the general elections or that's of the primaries? I'm talking about the primaries, sir. Well, basically, I mean, uh, yeah, okay. Those of us in this game uh, and in this game of politics as well, we know they've been campaigning, is assumed. And in any case, it was going to be conducted on the 25th of April. So this is more in excess of almost two months. So in the wisdom of the National Executive Committee, we know that the time is short, but we also do acknowledge the fact that they themselves have been canvassing and meeting delegates all this while. Had it not been the COVID-19 and the restrictions that we had, we should have been done in, um, and, and parted ways with this process. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of the COVID-19 and the restrictions, the protocols, how do you intend to you know, carry out the exercise whilst adhering to the social distancing protocols? Well, for us as a party, we also put in place measures. Um, mind you, we send Veronica buckets and PPEs during the restrictions period. Subsequently, we are also making available um, hand sanitizers and uh, face masks and other PPEs to the various delegates who will be trooping there to cast their ballots on the 20th of June. So we've taken all that into consideration. We also ensure that we do not flout the directives of His Excellency the President. Uh, and that's of the health authorities. Right. That's uh, in accordance with our health protocol. Right. Of okay. ensuring social distancing uh, uh, and all that we need to do to make sure our delegates and our party people are safe during Very this process. Well. So uh, hold on for me because the uh, pollster Benefson uh, has been analyzing the chances of your party. Listen. Oh, well, one thing is clear. We are going. There's going to be absence of large crowds. There are two or three portals which could have vote, affect the voting pattern. One, who the NDC picks at running mate and how they've been able to ginger, because there was a lot of apathy on the part of their supporters. Two, the MPP will be having their primaries on June 30th. Most of the safe seats of the NPP they won between 111,000 and 13,800. If they persist in trying to disenfranchise or disqualify contenders, and there is a level of apathy, we did that work towards last year, towards the book I'm finishing. The MPP candidate, Nana Kufuadu, could enter 2020 elections minus 400 to 450,000 votes because if, for example, I support Roland and Roland has been disqualified, I will not get up and vote. And I know that maybe the party won the seat by 11,000. Mm. If you take 4,000 people per, per um, constituency, 4,000 times at least 100 safe seats, that makes it 400,000. So these are some of the pitfalls that could affect their chances and voting pattern. All right. Uh, Mr. Oku, you heard him. He says if you insist on disenfranchising or disqualifying contenders, you risk, you know, losing votes within your own party. Well, I, have, uh, um, I, I, I think we also need to be factual here. It's a process. And once the person picked nomination forms, the person subjected himself to the process of scrutiny. The person also subjected himself to the process of vetting. And at a vetting, if the person doesn't make it, the person has an option to appeal. Subsequently, after the appeal process, it goes to National Executive Committee. So it's not a case of if someone doesn't like you at the parliamentary vetting committee level, you don't get any opportunity to make it to the next step. In any case, I, you know, we consider people who have gone through the vetting 
and then subsequently someone appealed against that nomination and then they had to be disqualified. You also have instances of people who were vetted out at the parliamentary vetting committee level. But then upon appeal, they were also reinstated. So it's not a, 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 a cut for all basis. We consider case by case basis, yeah, well. we make analysis of it, and as a political party, to we take political decisions to as well. All right. Many thanks for your time. That is uh, Sami Ewuku. He is national organizer of the governing MPP. Now, let's speak to those seeking to contest the incumbents. Michael Quay Jr. is contesting the Dominic Kwabinya seat. He joins us via Zoom. Mike, do you feel you are at a disadvantage because the time is too short to campaign and reach out to delegates, especially in the wake of uh, the coronavirus outbreak? Well, um, I don't know. Do you mean um, disadvantage as to the 20th date or as to the general election? To the 20th date. We're speaking about the primaries, the upcoming primaries. Oh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. I think um, we have all been in readiness waiting on the sidelines. We understand the unfortunate uh, situation of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic in uh, Ghana. Um, we are even lucky that because it's been well managed, the president has been able to open up a bit more in terms of the social protocols. So for some of us, we were ready in earnest. We were ready even for the 13th. But uh, we are reliably informed that the EC would not have been able to get the materials ready for as early as the 13th. That is why the 20th. So I must say congratulations uh, to the party for finding a solution. And uh, in fact, we were all ready to go earlier. And so the 20th is even a bonus of an extra week to do a few mop up and wrap up with a campaign so that the MPP can present its candidates for the general election in December. All right, uh, that's uh, Michael Quay Jr. He's contesting the Dome Kwabinya seat. I'm sure that we'll be having more conversations as we go ahead. You're watching Election Brief. We'll be going back to the issue of the MPP's uh, internal elections. But now, let's head to the Supreme Court because it has directed the Electoral Commission to provide a legal justification for refusing to allow the use of existing voters' identification card as part of acceptable documents in the upcoming mass voters' registration exercise. A seven-member panel of the court, presided over by the Chief Justice, Justice Enini Abois, uh, gave the order today during hearing of a suit by the opposition NDC challenging the EC's decision. The NDC has described as unconstitutional the EC's decision to reject the old voter's ID as a legitimate document for registering for a new one, alleging it will disenfranchise many. Listen to Johnson Asiedun Ketia making a case for the existing voter's ID to be added to documents required for a new uh, ID when he addressed a news conference yesterday. If you want to know if Close to 400,000 have been established by statistical service and the people who are 18 years and above. The Electoral Commission has captured 122,000. And again, this includes minors. So if you are just it, you may as well come to 120 or 150,000 who are 18 years and above who have been registered by the NIA. Now you have to look at those who have been given the car out of the 127,000. It's only 135,000 who have the car. Court correspondent Joseph Akable joins us uh, with details. Joseph, briefly, give us a background to this case. So this is the case that the NDC filed at the Apex Court. Uh, the main issue they were raising, uh, there are two issues. The first is to the effect that the Electoral Commission does not have the power to compile a new voter's register. The argument they make is that uh, per their understanding of what the law requires, the EC has the power to compile the register, then afterwards revise it as and when it intends to do so. And so they make the point that 
and they want a declaration from the court that the AC cannot go ahead to do this. Now, beyond that, they make the point that if indeed the court is minded to say that the EC can actually compile a new voters register, uh, they want a declaration that the EC's decision to reject the current voters ID as a form of identification for persons who want to get onto the electoral road. They want that decision by the EC to be declared as unconstitutional. And so the court should order that is if it's minded to allow the EC to go ahead with the registration. They should order the EC to allow persons who have the existing voters ID card to participate in the registration exercise. And so that is it by way of how the case uh, has traveled so far. Today in court, uh, the point was made by Justice Enin Yebwa, who is a CJ who is presided over this particular panel, uh, that they want the EC to address it on a specific issue relating to uh, why the existing voter ID card has been excluded. And so they're asking that they file legal arguments by way of written submissions. And once that is filed, the other parties in the case, that is the Electoral Commission, and the Attorney General's Office, if they are minded to do so, can also respond on points of law as well. So as I understand it, the Apex Court is asking the EC to provide a legal justification for refusing uh, to allow the use of the existing voters' uh, identification card as part of the acceptable documents in the upcoming registration exercise. What has been the argument by the EC in the past? In the past, the AC has made the point that, I mean, uh, what it does is that it takes the a constitutional instrument through the legal process goes to parliament and once it's, it's passed, they abide by it. And so what is interesting to note in this particular matter is that as it stands, if you recall, when it took the CI to parliament, that to be withdrawn at a point and another one was taken, which uh, would mature shortly. And so the point is being made again by the electoral commission that what they do is that they take the laws through the legal process and once it's passed, they stick to it. And so when there is a law that says that, I mean, persons who have and this particular card or don't have this card cannot participate in a certain registration. That is what they intend to abide by. Another piece of information that we are getting from the justice of the court, uh, by what Justice Inyabwa said today, is the fact that we understand the Attorney General's Office is raising an initial objection that relates to uh, the case that has been filed by the NDC. And so that is also another matter that the court says it has to deal with before it proceeds to deal uh, with the issue relating to the exclusion of the voter ID. And so what is going to happen is that the EC has up until 8 uh, to file the written submissions. The others have the opportunity to respond. Then the court uh, will sit on June 11. Uh, we understand that this is a matter that the court wants to deal with quickly because, you know, the EC has already started with a pilot exercise, and so they want to finish it up and ensure that all clarity is given to what is going to take place going forward. All right. Many thanks. Joseph Akablay is our court correspondent bringing us up to speed uh, on the court proceedings in court uh, at the Supreme Court today. Former President Rawlings, who has been speaking on the new voters register as his party observes 41 years since the June 4 uprising. Commemorations like this, he says, allow citizens to ponder, reflect and re-examine themselves, our conduct and policies, and to see if these have probably been aligned to the nation's core values of property, accountability, integrity and social justice. But I digress. On the issue of the voters register, he's asking Ghanaians to respect the mandate of the the Electoral Commission, which is the fulcrum of our multi-party democracy, must be supported and protected by all stakeholders to ensure a free and fair election and a peaceful society. That notwithstanding, it is equally important for that revered institution to ensure that the processes leading to this year's elections are done in consultation with the stakeholders of the nation to prevent unnecessary suspicion and promote a peaceful and cohesive society. An election is an event, but building a democratic, free and peaceful society is a process so that debate surrounding the new voters register must be thoroughly examined so we do not undermine the successes we have chalked so far as a nation. In addition, the constitutional mandate of the Electoral Commission must be respected by all. While we work towards perfecting 
our electoral process, I urge you all to pursue and sustain our uniqueness as a country in the democratization process. The sanctity of the right of choice is not a matter we can compromise on. So from one president to another former president, uh, John Dramani Mahama is wasting no time to reach to, out to the electorate with less than six months to the December polls. Earlier this week, the NDC flag bearer took his community engagement program to New Pomu and uh, Tasca, a fishing village in the Isujaman constituency. Mr. Mahama interacted with households in the community, seizing the opportunity to educate them on how to stay safe and protect their families from the coronavirus, even as he urge them to return him to power. Here are our exits. Thank you very much. You're All right. <laughs> you. And so we've had a good day. And um, at the end of it all, we reminded them that the elections are coming up on December 7th. And so they should come out in their numbers and uh, vote for NDC and uh, vote for John Dramani Mahama. We've done it before, we'll do it again, we'll make the people's lives better. And that's our show today, and uh, join us same time tomorrow, every weekday, 1.30 to 2 p.m. I'm Arba Kumsen. thanks for your company.